अर्ज किया है गुल की होने के तवाको पे जिए बेटे हर कली जान मुट्ठी में लिए बैठे तीरों तलवार से बढ़कर है तेरी तिरछी उठाए कितने आशिकों के कत्ल किए बैठे उमराबाद The year was the mid of 1700s. Rajkanu was looking at the dusty roads of Rajputan. She was lost in thoughts. She had a family to feed. Her husband has recently abandoned her, but she was young and willing to fight. Then she heard about a group of performers traveling between Rajputana and Northern Delhi. She loved to be a dancer, so she ignored all the name callings in her mohalla wala sirs. Nasne wali and she decided to join the group of performers from there she learned dancing and singing and the art of mimicry things were going fine with her until one day in burhanpur the group encountered the army of the founder of azaf shah dynasty nizamul mulk the group had to go with the army as performers but little deal came a new after this the life was about to change at aurangabad kanwar's name as a performer rose to fame and many men of high rankings became her fans she was having a good time and she was able to take care of her family with pride and honor her strong belief in maula ali and her passion to art attracted bahadur khan the great mansabdar of the mughalia hukuma shanshah hindustan mohammad shah at the age of 15 kanwar married bahadur shah and they had a daughter a daughter whose legacy will be ever remembered in the history of india they named her daughter chandaba by then kanwar has started to see the world with more wisdom that's why she let her childless sister mehtab ma to look after chandaba mehtab ma was a regular consort of the wazir azam of hyderabad nawab ratnuddola chandaba was beautiful and sharp and the nawab knew She was not an ordinary girl, but capable of doing something special. So he decided to educate her with the best possible means. Chanda grew up in a house with access to world-class library and scholars. She was well-read and very beautiful. Her long hair, dusky complexion, and smooth skin could invite the eyes of anyone. Her body was so perfect that the simple structures of ancient Pataliputra is far from comparison. Then something remarkable happened in Chanda's life. 1795 Battle of Kanda. In the war, Nizam was defeated by the Marathas, Madhav Rao the Second, which has led to the Treaty of Kanda. According to the treaty, the Nizam has to cede some of his territories to the Maratha Empire and give Ashrad Jha, the Kilawar of Aurangabad, as a hostage in Pune. By spending two years as a hostage, Jha managed to win over the confidence of the Marathas. He also managed to regain the ceded territories by the Nizam. Jha's diplomatic success impressed the Nizam and made him the Nawab of Hyderabad. To win over the confidence of Nizam, Jha introduced Nizam to Chanda Bibi, the finest lady that he knew. The Nizam wanted Chanda Bibi to be aware of his harem, but little did he knew about the abilities of Chanda Bibi. Chanda Bibi started off as a performer in his harem, and she had her interest in the political affairs as well. Sometimes her political advices to the Nizam was immaculate but the Nizam was impressed himself. She was appointed as Umrah the highest nobility and she was awarded the Jagirs at different occasions. Chanda started demonstrating her skills in javel, bows, arrows and the art of war. Soon she accompanied the Nizam in three different wars by wearing men's attire. Chanda was also consulted by the rulers of the state concerning policy matters. She also had diplomatic engagements with the Marathas. More than anything, the Nizam was fond of her dancing and singing. It was him, the second Nizam of Hyderabad, gave her the name Mahalaka, Moon's Age. As an honor to Mahalaka, 500 soldiers would march with her in an official visit. 
She was also a courtesan while the courts were held by Nizam. Her collection of poetry is called Gulzare Chanda, and she used to organize musheras and fairs previously reserved only for men. Chanda learned classical music and specialized in tumbi from Kushal Khan Anu, the great grandson of Tansi. She started to sing Sufi music in Drupad Raga and mixing it with Tal and Rag Bhairav. She was also a Kathak dancer. Mahalakabai's fascination to Urdu poetry came from the work of Siraj Aurangabali. She learned the art of poetry from Mir Alam, who later became the Nawab of Hyderabad. Even though Urdu was her first language, she was fluent in Arabic, Persian, and Bhojpuri. By the age of 14, Mahalakabai excelled in archery, horse riding, art of war, mimicry, dancing, and lot more. After the death of the second Nizam, Someone would have thought the age of Mahalakabai Chanda was about to over. But they were wrong, because she wasn't just a Malikaya Husn of Hyderabad, but an ace politician. She was a sweetheart of many men of high rankings, including two Nizams and three prime ministers. It was said that Captain Malcolm, the resident of Hyderabad, was impressed with the works of Mahalakabai Chanda. Mahalakabai was also impressed with Captain Malcolm. She gifted him Gulzare Chanda, the collection of gazelles calligraphed by her. Gulzari Chanda is now protected at the British Museum in the United Kingdom. Even though Malakabai had many boyfriends, she just loved one man, Raja Rao Rambara. He was a Maratha chief who fought with the Nizam against the Marathas. All her Nizms, Shairis and Shirs were dedicated to this man. She conducted Musheras or Urs, previously reserved for men of high rank. Malakabai wasn't just a politician who utilized her skills and charm for personal glory, but a person who believes in women empowerment and compassion. She established a cultural center where 300 girls will be trained by her and other masters in different disciplines. Mahalakabai's library contained manuscripts and books about the arts of poetry, science, and war. She sponsored and supervised the publication of Mahanam, a historical book about the revival state of Hyderabad. She also contributed a sum of one crore rupees for girls' education back in her time. Part of her jagi is today's Osmania University. She also constructed a wall around Maulani Durga where she frequently does her mushara. Mailakabai Chanda died in the year of 1824 and she was buried next to her mother's tomb in Maulani area, Hyderabad. After her death, according to her will, all her properties, collections and wealth was distributed homeless women. It is the cruel irony of history that the richest woman of her time who organized festivals, musheras and contributed to the monuments of Hyderabad has completely been sidelined by her own city. Her tomb is in dilapidated condition. A monument highlighting the patriarch, the United States federal government has contributed $100,000 for the preservation of the tomb. But this has only limited reach. We have to place Malakabai Chanda in the hearts of Indians, especially Indian women. Because living in late Mughal period in a patriarchal society, she is a relevant study material for today's time. A woman who could be a courtesan, artist, poet, politician, or a spiritual agent all at once. This is the story of Malakabai Chanda, a female warrior who fought three wars in men's attire. <laughs> घर में दिल को चुराया है तूने साली घर में दिल को चुराया है तुमने साली खोला हथेली को दिखा हाथ को उनको आंखें दिखा दे तुक साखी उनको आंखें दिखा दे तुक साखी चाहते ही जो बार-बार शराब